everybody, welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob, and today we've got a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right in. The first thing we want to talk about is FTX and things that are going on. The, really what it comes down to is just contagion. Then we're going to talk about Chapter 11, and we're also going to take a look at uh, just how much this is actually spread and how fast it's actually moving. And then we'll get into some good news for you, and uh, we'll do all that in, in a quick uh, simplistic way. Also, just so you know, right now it is uh, within the next 30 minutes, we're going to do the DCA show over on uh, Ben's channel at uh, Into the Cryptoverse. So I put his link in the description below. So what we're going to do is just going to talk about the news today, and then you can find uh, the link to the DCA show with uh, me, James from Invest Answers and Ben from Into the Cryptoverse, and we'll do the, the Q and A uh, over there. So, first things first. Uh, first things first, actually, is this: Happy Veterans Day, and uh, thanks to everybody who has served. I want to say uh, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, people that have put in the time to do their service to their country. And I want to say I appreciate you. I was in myself uh, for eight years or so, and uh, I just want to say thank you. And not to forget uh, the bigger things that are out there. Yes, of course, this is an awful situation that we're in. Yes, uh, this is gonna, it's probably going to uh, get a little bit worse. But uh, let's make sure that we recognize the things that are the big things that we should actually pay attention to. So thank you, uh, everyone who has served. Now then, this would be uh, the big story. And <clears throat> we're going to talk about this on, on Ben's channel in a little bit, but I wanted just to give some context back there about what's going on and the contagion because uh, it's a condensed version. So um, what we're taking a look at here, this is uh, Squawk Box, and we've got Anthony Scaramucci, the mooch, as he comes on and talks about uh, what happened. As you may remember, uh, Anthony Scaramucci and uh, Skybridge Capital, a little bit of issues uh, coming up to uh, this bear market. And what they did was they went into a uh, small agreement with FTX. And I'm just going to let Anthony tell you exactly what happened here. Because uh, if you, I mean, if we think about what's going on, this is, uh, this is pretty rough for everybody. And it's going to spread out even further. So we know that there's some other uh, exchanges going down. And uh, I think it doesn't just, just stop there. There is a, a wide swath of things that are going to be impacted. So just take a listen. This is about three minutes or so, and then uh, we'll jump back. So take a listen. She, Skybridge Capital founder, CNBC contributor, uh, and somebody who had sold part of his business to Sam Bankman Fried. Anthony, it's great to see you, sir. Well, I would say it's good to be here, but it's a you know concerning day, Andrew, uh, and there's a lot of distress in the markets. And a lot of my friends think it's the worst week in crypto in cryptocurrency history. Well, let, let's talk about that and let's talk about the, the ramifications of it. But but first, on a very personal basis, you spent some time with Sam recently. What happened? Well, you know, listen, I spent a lot of time with him. Actually, we we traveled to the Middle East. Uh, this is before these revelations were exposed. Uh, we were embarking upon helping him fundraise. He had, you know, he had purchased 30% of my business. And so was, as good citizens, we were, we were trying to help him around the world. When the crisis hit over the weekend, uh, I made a unilateral decision to fly down to the Bahamas on Tuesday uh, in the spirit of helping. And so you, you caught what Brian was saying there. Uh, the original idea was this is a rescue finance situation. Uh, and could we somehow help uh, which would obviously help the entire industry. And then when I got to the Bahamas, it became clear, at least from some of the people that worked on the legal team uh, and the compliance team, that perhaps there was more going on than it being a rescue situation. Uh, so when I left the Bahamas in the afternoon, I was actually distressed. I don't want to call it fraud at this moment because that's actually a legal term. Uh, and none of us know, uh, and we have to leave it up to the regulators. We also have to give people, everybody, a presumption of innocence. Uh, but I have to tell you, I'm distressed about it. I don't like it for the industry. And I would implore Sam and his family. Uh, he has two wonderful parents, uh, uh, Joe Bankman and Barbara Freed. I would implore them to tell the truth to their investors, get to the bottom of it, stop 22 tweets uh, but get there and get themselves in front of a regulator and explain exactly what happened 
Uh, and if there was fraud, let's clean it up to the extent possible and repair the accounts at FTX. For myself, I'll be working on buying back my equity um, and restoring that. Uh, the good news for Skybridge investors, we had no assets on custody there. We thought that was a potential conflict of interest. And so we were saved that way. Uh, but the bad news is, uh, and, I, and, I, and I'll say this very candidly to everybody, I liked and like and trusted Sam. Uh, and that violation of trust didn't go just to me, but 20 plus venture capitalists, uh, people around the world that trusted the brand and trusted the technology. Uh, and if there's something seriously wrong there, uh, which it looks likely that that's the case, Andrew, I would recommend to the family members and Sam himself get to a regulator and disclose everything. Uh, uh, and that's your moral imperative. Right. If you're a believer in quote unquote effective altruism, you've done damage to this industry, you've done damage to the people in this industry and the account holders that trusted you. So enough is enough. Uh, don't let a charade go on. Speak candidly, directly, and honestly uh, so that we can clean. Okay. So there you go. So that's a tough one. So Andy Scaramucci, uh, I've been on the show, really nice guy. Uh, I had no problems, uh, you know. I'd uh, love to have him back on. But uh, when he talks about here, he says, look, he goes, we can, uh, there is a, this thing called trust. Commodity is a trust you can't buy, and it takes your entire lifetime to build your reputation, only seconds to destroy it. And now here we are. Unfortunately, uh, with what's happening here with uh, with Anthony and uh, Skybridge, I mean, he sold a big chunk of his, he sold a third of his company to FTX. FTX goes under, and now he has to scramble to find that money back. Now, I'm not saying he's scrambling or not scrambling. I'm just saying that this is the contagion that we're seeing. And he also talked about 20 venture capitalists, or 20 VCs that were in there. And of course, all their money is gone. Gone, gone, gone. So I don't think we should be celebrating that. And uh, I think it's a, uh, it's, uh, it's a plurable, and it's a, it's a problem that we're having. And if, you, and just to be blunt, this is going to set us back years, I believe, uh, if not months, years, uh, for the trust, because these exchanges, unfortunately, represented crypto, and that's not what crypto is. Unfortunately, it is, it is self control. It is the ability to be your own bank, essentially. It is the ability to, to get out of the system. And unfortunately, the exchange has hijacked everything. I want you to remember one thing. We talked about this the last three days. Has there been any other, pro any other problem with any project that you know of as far as crypto and digital assets? The whole problem comes from greed, a lack of oversight, and a problem with the people that are running the show as far as the on and off ramps. That is the bigger difference. There's nothing to say that other things have, have been uh, uh, collapsing as far as the projects. No double spend for, for Bitcoin. It's doing its, uh, its job. And actually, we're going to take a look at a, a good story uh, coming up. And all the things that are going on, the problem is the exchanges. And the problem is the people. And the problem is the greed. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then also, just to uh, talk about uh, the problems that are going on as far as contagion, uh, looks like uh, BlockFi is going down. So this was from a guy from Coin Bureau. He just uh, sent this out, and I got this letter from a lot of different people. He sent it to me. It says, uh, we are shocked and dismayed by the news regarding FTX and Alameda. We, like the rest of the world, found out about the situation through Twitter. That's awful. Given the lack of, lack of clarity in the status of FTX, FTX, and Alameda, we are not able to operate business as usual. Our priority has been and will continue to be able to protect our clients. Tell us further clarity, we're limiting platform activity, including pausing client withdrawals. So now they're just saying, well, you know, it's this, but really what it comes down to is contagion. And then, oh, and one more thing, I wanted to, to, to bring this up, make this crystal clear, and that is that uh, don't beat yourself up if, if you say to yourself, man, I should have done my research. I should have done more due diligence. I'm, I should have done, trust me. Anthony Scaramucci and Skybridge Capital did a, a hellacious amount of due diligence. They just got screwed. And uh, like he talked about, he goes, I'm not going to say fraud because that is a legal term, but he's leaning towards fraud. And the same thing can be said about Kevin O'Leary. And we talked about this yesterday, you know, from uh, Mr. Wonderful. You don't think that he did his, do his due diligence and the people that are around him, they, you don't think they did their own research. So don't t t beat yourself up for something that you thought was the greatest thing of all time. And FTX was getting great. We got, we got rug pulled, we got scammed, that's just what it is. However, there is one thing I need to make mention again, the rules underneath me, the rules, the rules, the rules. 
Never invest more than you can afford to lose. It's all gone. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't leave anything on exchanges. Put it into cold storage. Or if you don't have a, a ledger or a tracer, at least put it into a hot storage like a MetaMask wallet or the uh, third-party wallets for the different projects that are out there. I mean, I know like uh, Near Protocol and Solana, they have their own wallets. Just at least use those. Don't use leverage and take profits along the way. That's the big thing. And I need you guys that are here who are, you are not uh, tourists. I need you to help me moving forward to teach these lessons to the people that are going to come in. Because I don't know if we're going to get regulation. So we got to be the brother's keeper for everybody who comes in and like, hey, whatever comes about, there's going to be other scams. There's going to be other exchanges. There's going to be other things. And there's going to be all these different things. That's like, this is the, the next great thing. We have to remind people of what just happened this year going forward. So they don't get screwed. Like we've been screwed. So let me know how you think about that. And then, uh, lastly, maybe not lastly, uh, FTX just officially, uh, filed for chapter 11. So welcome to the club. Uh, you're in an, a, an elite group of chapter 11 in crypto, exchanges welcome to uh the celsius and the voyagers of chapter 11 and isn't that amazing ftx was one of the big ones sam was going to be the next warren buffett now here we go and then also i, I just on, on a quick note uh these chapter 11s aren't going to do pretty well uh, celsius just filed a motion yesterday requesting approval to extend the exclusivity period in our class it's a period where celsius has the exclusive right to submit a plan of reorganization Look, they went into Chapter 11 in June. Let me do some quick math. So that's like four months. If you don't have a plan by now, that ain't happening. So you can do the exclusivity here for Celsius, but all they're doing is they're, they're sucking away your funds and my funds to pay the people within there and also paying a bunch of lawyers. So Chapter 11 really is awful. And uh, hopefully uh, they get out of it, but uh, I don't see a way out anytime soon. I think the best bet is... Uh, with uh, Simon Dixon, and I'll be interviewing him in three hours, as a matter of fact. So if you got questions for him, uh, put those in the description below. And then on top of this, I, I will say, if you're on this channel, you know my rules. These are the rules that I have. You can have, you can have follow them or not. It's okay. I mean, I'm not your dad. Cannot, I'm not a financial advisor. But it just astounds me still how many people are losing out. So this is from uh, Will Clemente, uh, co-founder of uh, Reflexivity, Res. And he says, probably speak for everyone when I say I know several people who lost everything on FTX. I'm like, really? How the hell did that happen? I mean, they gave you a heads up. You know, I mean, Dylan, he's Dylan Sinclair, his buddies, uh, pretty much put it out there and said, hey, they are insolvent. And this was four or five days ago. This is the beginning of the week. And he says, I know several people lost everything on FTX and some employees have lost their equity and now I've taken a reputational hit as well. Very dark, dark times for our industry. It didn't have to be like that. And then also on top of that, this is from uh, Satoshi Stacker. Got a great website or got a great uh, YouTube channel. It says there's about 85 million have been transferred from Nexo to Binance the last 20 hours. Get your funds out. I don't know why you would... <clears throat> 85 million seems like uh, quite a bit of money, but these are obviously institutions, not an individual. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Somebody's got that, but... He says, get your funds out. But in all honesty, if you've got millions and millions in your institution, uh, I, don't know. I don't know why I'd go to that, but it, it is what it is. And uh, so again, if the, if the whales are doing it, it might behoove you to either put it on a safe, ex they say it's a safe exchange, but I'm just here to tell you nothing's safe right now, right? Thank God we have cold storage devices and that's uh, the big news. And then lastly, that is a, uh, friend of the show, Gary Gensler. I know Gary watches every, every, thank you, Gary, for watching and liking and subscribing. But uh, he had a video and he put out and uh, the regulations are coming. And the reason they're coming is because of everything that's just going, been gone wrong. And remember, the, these bad actors, they're not going to stop. They're not going to. And the people who want to stick with the status quo are the people that are getting filthy rich off of this. So you understand that, you know, all the things that are happening, we'll understand that and we'll know, but we can only get a hold of so many people, right? So as time moves on, other people are going to get screwed that, that come in and it's just a big cycle and we'll never get out of the kiddie pool. It's just how it is. I, I, I it just, I don't know. To me, it, this is the one thing that frustrates me about uh, regulation and clarity. You can call whatever you want to, but really I should just call it clarity. But I did a poll and I asked the question and I said, hey, who? 
what needs regulation in crypto? What needs regulation in crypto? And I asked the question, is it crypto exchanges, crypto projects, nothing needs regulation and everything. And so far, you can see that, I don't know about everything. I don't think everything needs regulation. DeFi, good luck with that. You're not going to regulate that. You know, crypto projects, 1.3%. Yeah, I can see through that. And nothing needs regulation was 10%. And then so far, we've got around 1,500 votes. We also did the same thing on uh, YouTube. And now we're sitting at 3,500 votes, pretty much the same thing. So... I know in the comments, the people that are the most vocal or that are anti-regulation are the ones that are the loudest, but I think there's a silent majority who's like, I'm sick of this crap. Let's just get this over with. We know it's going to be, regulation is going to suck, but let's just do this so we can move forward and go from there. I mean, the only, the only other alternative I can think of personally is just straight up hardcore education and talking to people about, you know, hey, this is why we use Bitcoins. There's no, there's no third party. There's no middleman and you can be your own bank and you can transfer everything around the globe if you want to. It's just fine. You don't need anything. You're responsible. It's great. I, that's why I set up danteachescrypto.com, 100% free website. And I show everybody how to you, you work a ledger, what a, uh, a private key, what a public key is, how to transfer things and, and the whole principles. I made it free. It will always be free. So people can go there and look, check it out and have it all just spoon fed to them in bite sized pieces. That was the point. So let me know what you think about these things. If you are for regulation and against regulation, and why are you for regulation? And if you are, and if you're not for regulation, tell me the alternative. Tell me, tell me how we do this. And there's a fine line between regulation and clarity. I still think we need clarity. What, what is a cryptocurrency? What is a currency? What is a commodity? What is a security? That's about it. And then lastly, let's talk about some good news. First of all, class of 2021, congratulations. You are probably officially, uh, this is the hardest cycle for crypto investors I've seen to date. So my hat's off to you. If you're still here, ice in the veins for sure. But uh, where there is a massive collapse, there is massive opportunity. And I'm not telling you that we're going to go to the moon anytime soon. I see this is a multi-year problem. And it's going to take, if you're a, an investor, again, the rules I have, don't invest more, you can afford to lose all those things. It's going to take some time, but I think that there is a payoff towards the end, but make no mistake, it ain't easy, baby. And it's going to be tough going. However, I think I just lost my voice. Maybe I'm hitting puberty. This was a good one. <clears throat> Oil and gas industry giant that, uh, makes their foray into Bitcoin mining industry. I think this is important. Because of two reasons, ESG, which I think is a scam, anyhow, uh, and also uh, just about uh, dropping the cost for miners, which I think is going to be uh, good. This is what's happening. So Shell, I don't know if you heard of them, pretty big in the oil industry. The company signed a two-year sponsorship with Bitcoin Inc. and Bitcoin Magazine for the Bitcoin Conference. That's not the big story. That's that's just small small potatoes. Darren Gonzalez, U.S. Immersion Cooling Lead at Shell Lubricants, stated, hey, as part of an integrated energy solution, Shell Immersion Cooling Fluid S5X, I don't know what that is, is designed to reduce energy costs and emissions through its high cooling efficiency, flow behavior, and excellent thermodynamic properties. Shell highlighted that their new solution could potentially cut down energy costs and carbon footprints of Bitcoin mining up to 48%. So essentially, if you've ever seen the motherboards and people who are big into uh, uh, overclocking uh, computers and, and gaming, you'll see them sometimes they will uh, immerse, immerse those motherboards uh, into uh, some type of coolant to uh, keep things cool, keeps the energy cost down. Well, Shell has their own division and they're like, hey, we got this great product for you. We'd like to go into business with you. And that is essentially what brings us into a little bit more mainstream. So that's it. That's what we got for the news today. Not all... Not all awful, but just remember, the exchanges are the ones that screwed us, right? So look at the projects that are building right now. They're doing great things that are not having problems and just continue to trudge along. Those are the next great ones. However, we just got to get through this nonsense. So that concludes today for the news. Before you take off, just know, again, that will be on uh, Ben's channel. And there's a link in the description. 
<clears throat> ben always gives the links late because he uses, uh, I think he uses Zoom. But uh, we'll go over there. I'll answer some questions right now just to kill some time. But uh, we start at uh, two, well, in eight minutes. So the next uh, four or five minutes, I'll answer all your questions, the best of my abilities. But uh, if you want to just head over to Ben's uh, site or Ben's uh, YouTube channel, you can do a search uh, or I can just be nice and put it in the comments. There you go. All right. And there's also in the description. And uh, meet us over there. This ought to be good. Me, James, and Ben on this one. Ah, this is going to be a great one. All right. That's it. Now let's uh, I'll do a little Q&A. And as you may notice, my voice is a little bit hoarse. We did a meetup last night at uh, San Juan Smokehouse. Great place. Good briskets. Pretty good beers and stuff. And, uh, it was a great time meeting everybody who's, uh, who's here uh, trudging through the bear market. Excellent. Met a couple of Georges. I met uh, uh, No Meme, uh, his husband, and uh, it was great. Good times. A lot of good people. All right. Uh, let's see. Beardy's here. SBF for prison. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's amazing how things work when you're super rich, you know. It's like, you know, don't don't sell an ounce of marijuana, we're going to throw you into jail for 30 years. But if you, you know, screw over people for billions of dollars and, and but you have billions of dollars, it seems like everybody sweeps under the rug. It's amazing to me. Yeah, man, it was pretty fun. Good times. Tesla, see you, see you over there. Uh, is it DCA and Ben's channel? It's DCA and Ben's channel. Yep. Yes. Yes, it is. So if you go over there, uh, again, links in the description. I also put it in the chat so you can find him. Well, you know, I was talking to Steven last night. He's the owner of uh, Smokehouse about Solana. And he was, I mean, he does a lot of DeFi things. I don't do that, that much stuff with it. And he goes, look, he goes, he goes, I've been using Solana for, for quite some time. And he goes, it's awesome. It's fast. It works. Nothing really drops off. And he goes, it's cheap. I'm like, wow, makes a lot of sense, actually. So, I mean, those are the things that we're doing. Now, if you don't like the whole part about the centralization versus decentralization and what is decentralized and, and the different hiccups that they've had on the, on the network, gotcha, right? But so far, nothing's perfect. That's all I'll say. It is a nice shirt. Thank you. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Mark says, SBF will not see any jail time. He was working with Ginzler to collapse the industry. So no competition for the digital dollar. They almost sucked Binance in, killed two exchange one. You know what else I learned? Uh, Sam's parents, either his dad or his mom, I'm pretty sure it's his dad, worked at MIT. And he also knew Gary Ginzler which was a kind of a weird situation. Also, his mom is uh, pretty heavily into uh, fundraising for politics. It's amazing how that worked out. And then all of a sudden, he became a billionaire. Just saying. Tinfoil hat, but it's uh, a lot of coincidences there. <laughs> Enron lawyers and new FTX CEO. Enron or Enron? Uh... Yeah, I mean, maybe. Uh, Bloomberg. Bloomberg lists Sam Bankman's frauds. <laughs> it's funny. It's a good one, Dennis. As uh, $3. My net worth is higher than the SBF. It's the times we live in. It's amazing, right? Go from... Ah, I know. But Ben, the whole point was to bring everybody over. Uh, let's see. I'll be over there in a minute. No offense, we seem hungover. How dare you? How dare you? I got to tell you, it's very hot here. I'm dehydrated. I think I'm more dehydrated than anything else. Let's see. Downtime. SPF wants any jail time. All right, buddy. So that's it. That's it for today. I got to get over there. So everybody, I want you guys to come over to, uh, to Ben's channel, and let's really hash this out. Uh, Ben's got some great points. James has got some excellent things to talk about. And then we can answer all your questions to the best of our ability. So jump over there. See you in a bit. Uh, adios.